Sí, y aquí está el gráfico. En el color. So it's a, so it is a pleasure to introduce uh, Enrique Garcia, one of our very, very important leaders. And he will be uh, talking about the spectrum of finite groups and the equidal invariants. Enrique? Thank you for the invitation. So, in this talk, uh, uh, well, I, I will talk about some uh, recent work in progress with Professor Rutherzian and Katsako. And, well, he, he can be talking about a sort of appendix from Professor Bernardo Toxic. Uh, well, many. No, he explained that I didn't explain. Uh, okay, so. Uh, uh, I will start with some uh, motivation uh, for the introduction of, uh, of equidal invariance as well as of the, the spectrum of the finite groups. And then I will explain in a little bit more, uh, with a little bit more detail uh, how to construct the, uh, the equidal invariant of a finite group as well as the spectrum of the finite group. And at the end, I will try to, to state at least some uh, Questions about the relation between these two uh, these two things. Okay, so uh, let me start with uh, with Nether's problem. So in uh, 1970, Nether stated the following question, which is uh, related with the inverse problem of uh, of the theory uh, of the lab theory, and the question is as follows. So suppose that you have some field, you fix some field K. And then uh, you take some uh, group, uh, some sort of group of uh, permutations on n, on n letters, and you ask, uh, well, you, you can consider the action on the rational uh, uh, function field on these uh, n letters, and you can uh, try to uh, answer the following question. So uh, suppose that you take the fixed field of the action of the, this uh, algebraic action of G on, on the field of rational functions, and you ask if this a uh, fixed field is a purely transcendental extension of K. So this is uh, an algebraic form of Nether's problem. And uh, in geometric uh, terms, this is uh, asking for the following question. So suppose that you take the action of this G on the affine space, and then you portion uh, the affine space by, uh, by the algebraic action of G. So, uh, well, you can produce this kind of uh, quotient just by taking the spectrum of the um, of the uh, fixed ring in this uh, in this n um, variable, and this produces the quotient. And you are asking if this quotient is a rational variety, that is to say, if it's by rationally equivalent to the in space or not. Okay, so this is Nether's problem, and uh, well, it turns out that. Uh, there are counterexamples, as uh, Professor Bernardo uh, tells us in, in the previous talk. And uh, the first uh, counterexample of Nether's question was given by Swan in uh, 1969. Uh, and uh, it turns out that if you consider the cyclic action uh, of uh, set mod P on, on, on P variables, on, on P letters, X, then, uh, uh, well, it turns out that uh, the corresponding fixed field is not a uh, purely transcendental extension whenever P is one of these three primes. Okay, so in that cases, uh, uh, we have uh, an extension which is not purely rational, and this is uh, this provides a negative answer, the first one of uh, Nether's, pro Nether's problem. Okay, so uh, moreover, uh, it was also shown by Salman that uh, if you take some uh, number prime, uh, prime number P, which is different from the characteristic of the field, then there are always uh, finite fields of order P to the ninth, for which the number, uh, the number of problems has a negative answer. 
Okay, so uh, uh, the proof of this uh, fact uh, rests on some uh, cohomological invariant that was introduced by Arkin and Moffat, uh, which uh, is essentially given by the Brouwer group, the unramical Brouwer group of the of the quotient variety obtained by taking the quotient of the infinite space by divided by the action of this finite group G. And well, later on in in the 80s, Bogomolov identified precisely what is this or, or provides an explicit description uh, in purely as right terms of this uh, this Arctic import invariant. And it is given exactly uh, uh, in this way. So you can take the uh, you can take the part of the short multipliers which uh, vanish when you restrict to the uh, to each abelian subgroup of G, and this uh, can be identified with the unbroken pipe uh, Brouwer group of the quotient. Okay, so uh, um, yeah, moreover, Bogomolov uh, shows so proof that uh, in fact this uh, Brouwer group or this Bogomolov uh, group uh, is an uh, an obstruction of provides an obstruction for rationality. And in fact, he proved that whenever the quotient is a rational variety, uh, then the Bogomolov multiplier, which is given by, which is uh, by definition of this uh, group uh, BG, is uh, zero. Okay. Uh, now, uh, well, uh, in the year of uh, 2009, 2009, Ekedal introduce a new kind of uh, a new kind of invariant for finite groups which can be thought as a, as a sort of refinement uh, um, of the Bogomolov multiplier so the idea is that you can assign to each finite group G you can assign some element in the so-called motivic ring of varieties or in a completed version of this ring uh, in such a way that uh, well, moreover, you can also extract out of this uh, out of this element a whole sequence of invariants uh, leading in in some kind of growth in the group of abelian groups, like like this, uh, in such a way that this is kind of a refinement of the Bogomolov multiplier. So, okay, uh, well, in fact, this is more, more precisely this uh, can be said by saying that the second uh, invariant obtained. Uh, uh, in this uh, way that I will uh, explain a little bit more uh, in, with more detail later on in the talk uh, is in fact given by the dual of the of the Bogomolov multiplier. Okay. So uh, well, finally, so this is for this is for the Bogomolov multiplier and the equitable refinement given by the by this motivic. Uh, uh, invariants of the finite group, and then, uh, well, uh, in some recent work with Professor Ernesto and, and Professor Katsartov, we uh, construct or we introduce uh, some, uh, well, well, we introduce an invariant of, a, of an algebraic orbital, which is called the uh, the stringy spectrum of an orbital, and uh, the idea is that this is, uh, well, this is kind of inspired in the in the classical notion of the Steinberg spectrum in singularity theory, and uh, well, for any uh, such orbital, for any algebraic complex orbital uh, X, we can assign or we can produce uh, a collection of rational numbers, each, uh, each one with a uh, with a certain associated multiplicity, in such a way that uh, this is uh, or this resembles, in some sense, the Steinberg spectrum of a of a hypersurface singularity. Okay, so more or less this kind uh, uh, or this invariant uh, can be constructed out of the churn rank homology of, uh, of the corresponding orbital. And I, I will also explain uh, uh, later. Okay, so, uh, well, uh, in particular, whenever we have a finite group uh, uh, and we take a finite dimensional complex linear representation of G, which is faithful. So we take a faithful representation of this G. Uh, then we can uh, ask for the stringy spectrum of the corresponding quotient stack given by 
and by dividing this uh, the, well this uh, b uh, by the uh, by the action of g, and then we can uh, produce out of this portion uh, a spectrum which is collection of rational numbers like this with certain multiplicities, and well we can uh, define uh, we can uh, yeah we can define the spectrum of uh, of a finite group in terms of the corresponding spectrum of the quotient oligopole. So this can be done because, uh, well, this is independent of the choices that we uh, made here. So we, for any faithful representation, the spectrum doesn't, uh, it, it's just the same. So we can take any faithful representation, let's say the regular one or whatever, and we can produce these, uh, these numbers. Okay, so, well, uh, very, uh, general question is uh, what is, if any, the relation between uh, these spectral numbers and the ethical invariance? Uh, okay, so let me just uh, uh, explain uh, with more detail how uh, we can construct the ethical invariance. Uh, uh, as Professor Bernardo says, this uh, invariance lives uh, in the motivic ring of variety. So, well, you take uh, just the category of algebraic varieties over some P of K, and then we can take the isomorphism, the set of isomorphism, isomorphism classes of uh, those varieties and divide by the corresponding system relations by taking pieces of these varieties, and uh, we can introduce on the uh, on the resulting uh, abelian group some multiplication given by the partition product of varieties. And well, in this uh, ring, the uh, well, this ring is unital. The class of the of the unity here is given by the by the singleton variety a zero, and uh, we also have the corresponding class of the fin line, which is sometimes called the Lipschitz motif, living in this ring. And this kind of identities holds in 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 this k naught. So we can take uh, the projective space, and we can. Uh, Take the, the standard affine stratification and this produce some uh, some expression of the class for the class of the projective uh, space in terms of uh, as, as a polynomial in this in this uh, class L. Okay, so uh, well, whenever the characteristic is uh, zero, we can use uh, resolution on singularities in order to prove that uh, this ring can be generated by smooth and proper varieties, and this will be important. Uh, later. Uh, and uh, well, if you take uh, the corresponding ring generated, the free abelian group generated by uh, some of the classes of proper and smooth varieties, then you need to model out these uh, blow up relations in order to recover uh, the original uh, uh, group of varieties. So this is sometimes called the Wittner's presentation for the motivic, uh, for the uh, group of varieties. And well, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, well, in this setting, uh, by a generalized uh, Euler characteristic of algebraic varieties, we mean uh, some rule which uh, takes a variety X and uh, produces some, uh, some element in, in a ring, in a commutative ring R. So a generalized, by definition, a generalized Euler characteristic with values in R is given by such kind of rule. Uh, in such a way that these uh, three conditions are satisfied. So these conditions are precisely uh, the series of uh, the series of relations and the indicative. Uh, well, if you think that this uh, kind of uh, generalized Euler characteristic is multiplicative, and well, uh, it is. Uh, it turns out that these uh, three conditions are uh, enough to guarantee that such kind of uh, Generalized Euler characteristics are given uh, just by uh, some morphism from the from the growth and the green of varieties into this R. So it's just the same to have uh, to have uh, some generalized Euler characteristic like this, or to uh, have some uh, ring homomorphism from the growth and the group of varieties into into R. So in particular, uh, due to business presentation, we can define. Uh, a generalized Euler characteristic just uh, in, by its values on, uh, on proper and smooth varieties. Of course, we need to verify that this is invariant under blow ups. So, so, for example, we can define the Hodge Deline or the Euler Poincare uh, 
uh, polynomials uh, by using the cohomology uh, of x, where this x is, uh, in this case, is a proper and smooth variety, and we can uh, extend this, uh, uh, this uh, characteristic to the whole multiple degree uh, using Dignan's presentation. Okay, so uh, moreover, we also need, uh, well, in order to produce the invariance that we need, uh, uh, we need to invert the class of the Lepschitz motif because this is sometimes related with uh, uh, something called the motivic volume of a variety. And this, uh, this uh, localization uh, allows us to normalize uh, appropriately our, our volumes. OK, so well, moreover, we also have some, uh, some dimensional filtration on the, on the motivic ring. So the motivic ring is, by definition, this localization of the golden degree of varieties. And on this uh, localized ring, we have a filtration given by dimension. So uh, uh, we have this filtration. And if we complete uh, the motivic ring with respect to this uh, filtration, we obtain a, a non archimedian ring, which is called, which is called the motivic value ring. OK, so well, we need to complete this uh, this ring in order to be able to take limits. Uh, so for instance, if we if we want to invert uh, the class uh, of one minus L to the N, then we can use some geometric series like this. And uh, these kind of expressions, uh, which involve uh, limits of, of elements in the multiple ring, uh, make sense uh, using this kind of, of completion. Okay, so, well, now, uh, in order to define uh, the Ekedal invariant of a finite group, we need to uh, we need to introduce or uh, we need to introduce the category of stacks and not just the, uh, the category of varieties. So the stacks are some uh, we can think of uh, the category of stack as an enlargement of the uh, category of classical varieties. And uh, you can think of an stack as a kind of, uh, it's kind of a, a space which locally looks like the, uh, the portion of, a, of an algebraic variety divided by some uh, algebraic group. So, uh, well, in particular, orbitals uh, uh, fits into this uh, or lives in this category of the stacks. And, well, we can, uh, similarly, as in the case of varieties, we can define the corresponding Gothenic uh, ring of uh, algebraic stacks by taking just the same cis relations, and we can introduce uh, uh, a multiplicative structure using the Cartesian product of the stacks. But uh, we also need to uh, introduce some extra relations uh, uh, in this case. So we need to uh, we need to ask that whenever we have uh, a vector bundle defined, vector bundle E defined over some stacks. X and if this is an n rank uh, vector bundle, then we need that the class of the total space of the bundle equals the product of the base times the, the class of the file, uh, like this. Okay, so if we introduce this additional uh, relation in the uh, in the growth in the ring of the stacks, then we can uh, write down uh, the growth in the, this growth in the, uh, ring in terms of the growth in the ring of varieties. So in fact, uh, Ekedal's proof that uh, this k not of the stacks can be obtained as a localization of uh, k not of varieties. So the idea is that uh, well, we can split the class. Uh, so if we take some positive integer n, then we can take the class of the general linear group or uh, the coefficients in this in this base field k, and the class of this. Uh, uh, of this uh, GLM decomposes uh, like this as a product of polynomials uh, of this a very specific form uh, on the Lebschitz model. So this implies that. Uh, so, see, quick question: What type of stacks have you taken? Are uh, uh, stacks or finite type? No, uh, uh, not a finite type, type, type over K with a finite type of finite. Okay, I see finite salad. No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, uh, well, since we have this kind of decomposition of the, uh, for the class of, the, of GLN, 
then uh, since uh, well v g l n here is the is the class of the classifying stack of 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 uh, n random bundles and uh, well we have the uh, the total space of the universal bundle over this v g l n which is just a point in the category of the stacks. And uh, using this fact, uh, then uh, we can, uh, or this proves that, uh, this proves that the class of BGLN in the in K naught of stacks is uh, it's invertible, and it, its inverse is given just by the inverse of this product of, uh, of polynomials. So, uh, well, this means that uh, we have a map which, uh, well. We need to use this fact in order to prove that. Uh, well, we need to use some stratification of of the uh, of um, of um, the stack that we are working uh, with in this case. But uh, at the end, this uh, produces some map which goes from the uh, from the from k naught of the stacks in uh, onto this uh, uh, localized uh, ring uh, of variables by inverting this all of these. Uh, uh, polynomials L, uh, Ln minus 1. Okay, so the thing is that uh, this map is in fact an isomorphism and we can recover the Grotten group of stacks out of the Grotten uh, group of varieties by inverting just these uh, uh, polynomials. Uh, well, uh, the point is that <coughs> if you have this kind of identification, then you can take some stack in, in this category over uh, of this base field K, and you can produce some class which lives uh, in the in the in the completed uh, uh, motivic ring, because uh, well this uh, localization in fact lives inside the completed uh, or or the motivic value ring because all of these uh, polynomials uh, one over uh, one over one minus L to the N lives in the in the completed motivic ring, and so you can produce out of this uh, identification uh, uh, for each stack. With, uh, you can produce some class which lives in the completed uh, uh, motivic ring. Okay. So in particular, uh, if you take some finite group G, then you can produce the corresponding classifying stack, which is uh, uh, which is uh, uh, well, by all of my definition, this is the stack which is uh, which satisfies the, the following property. So whenever you have any other stack X, then the the space or the group point of stacking maps from X onto this BG are uh, exactly given by the group point of uh, of G of principal G bundles over X. So this classifying stack. Uh, uh, you can produce this classifying stack all, uh, out of uh, any finite group G, and then you can uh, uh, take the class of BG on the uh, on this k naught of stacks and use this identification in order to produce some element which lives in the in the motivic value ring and 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 uh, Okay, so by definition, the class uh, of uh, of BG in this uh, completed motivic ring is by uh, this, this is by definition the uh, motivic, uh, sorry, the the equivalence invariant of G. Okay, so uh, this is one way to define the equivalence invariant, but uh, well, it turns out that you can uh, you can compute or you can uh, yeah, you can compute uh, this uh, invariant uh, by taking uh, this kind of limits, which uh, resembles in some way the the the, the motivic volume in, in, in the theory of the integration. So if you can take any faithful representation of G, and out of this faithful representation, you can recover the graph uh, of BG using uh, by taking this this kind of limit using the appropriate uh, this kind of normalization. Normalization. Okay. So uh, <coughs> well. Uh, furthermore, out of this uh, equivalence invariant, you can construct a whole sequence of invariants. So you can take uh, basically the cohomology with, a, with, a, with some with, uh, uh, with some shift uh, uh, that uh, you need to take into account because of these uh, normalizations by L 
uh, by dividing by this uh, by the class of the Lebesgue small t, and uh, well, using or by taking these cohomology classes, you can produce out of the class of BG uh, a sequence of invariants which lives. In this case, uh, you are, uh, here we are taking the class of uh, the cohomology in the Grothendieck uh, group of abelian groups. So you can take the, uh, the category of handedly generated abelian groups, and then you uh, you can um, um, uh, uh, you can introduce some relations of the set of isomorphism classes of finitely generated abelian groups by by allowing uh, that the, the class of uh, the direct sum is, is just the sum of the classes. And well, uh, this uh, E uh, I of G lives in this uh, kind of uh, group. And uh, those are, by definition, the, the corresponding equal invariants of G. OK, so, well, uh, there's uh, for the, the first few values of these equal invariants can be computed. Uh, and so, for any finite group, uh, uh, all of these equal invariants are zero uh, for, for negative degrees. And in degree zero, we have just a class uh, given by the integers. And moreover, the first equal invariants always uh, vanish in this case. And the second one is uh, is given uh, uh, as, uh, as in the first part, part of the top just by the dual of the Bob model multiplier. OK, so, uh, so uh, based on uh, Swan's example, then Ekelas proved that, in fact, the uh, uh, the equal invariant of the uh, of this particular cyclic group uh, uh, is uh, not trivial over the rational numbers, but in any case over the complex numbers that is, that is the case that we are interested in. All of these uh, invariants are trivial. Uh, okay, so now let me just say a few words about uh, the stringy spectrum of of orbitals in order to introduce. Uh, um, the the spectrum of a finite group, and well, uh, for any uh, complex algebraic orbital X, uh, you can define its motivic volume as living in the in, in some version of the motivic of the completed motivic ring. In this case, uh, you need to take into account the action of uh, the pro finite uh, the pro uh, cyclic group of groups of unity, which is this mu. So um, this uh, this limit is uh, taken with respect to the arc spaces. And in fact, we need to consider the twisted arc uh, uh, spaces of, of the orbital X uh, in order to, this to, uh, to, well, well, we need to, to take into account uh, the twisted versions of these arc spaces in order to define the, uh, correctly the, uh, the motivic volume of an orbital. And uh, well, uh, out of this, uh, um, uh, well, you see this definition for the motivic volume. You can compute when the uh, in the case of uh, of an smooth orbital uh, that uh, uh, so whenever x is smooth as an orbital as an stack so the really move for a stack then the motivic volume in this case is just given by the class of the inertia stack in this case and moreover by using some techniques of uh, motivic integration and uh, suitably generalize uh, to the case of the linear move for stacks, you can prove uh, also that uh, this uh, motivic volume of an orbital is invariant with respect to uh, to some uh, some kind of uh, birational morphism. So uh, this is sometimes called the K invariance for the motivic volume in this case. Uh, but the point is that uh, out of the motivic volume, you can produce uh, 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 well, see, since in the smooth case, the motivic volume is given by the, the class of the inertia stack, then uh, when you take uh, the Hodge characteristic in that case, what you uh, recover is, uh, is the churn run uh, cohomology of, uh, of X in this case. So, uh, well, by taking uh, a correct uh, version of the Hodge-Deling characteristic in the orbital setting, you can extract 
out of this uh, the chain run homology of X. And it turns out that this uh, chain run homology uh, carries a fraction of pure Hodge structure uh, uh, in each, uh, with respect to each uh, weight R in this case, which is a rational number here. And uh, using this fractional Hodge structure, so you can produce the stringy spectrum uh, because, uh, well, there, there is a relation between monodromic uh, actions, so actions of rules of unity on mixed Hodge structures. Uh, uh, when you have a monodromic action like this on a mixed Hodge structure, then you can use this uh, in order to produce a fraction of Hodge structure, which, uh, uh, and out of that uh, thing, you can extract some numbers which are, uh, which, uh, which uh, well, well this, uh, proceed, this kind of procedure is used in order to Define the string, the, the steam brick spectrum of, uh, of an, uh, hypersurface, isolated uh, hypersurface singularity. And mimic that uh, kind of construction, you can use the chain rank of homology and its uh, fraction of Hodge structure in order to produce uh, some, uh, some numbers, which at the end are, by definition, the, the, the string spectrum of, uh, of, of this uh, X. Okay, so. Uh, so, uh, um, so you can use this to produce or to define the, the spectrum of G, just as the string spectrum of the portion or before. Uh, so you can take uh, uh, this uh, regular representation in this case, but uh, it doesn't matter. You can take any paper representation of G and it produces the same, uh, the same bunch of, of numbers. Uh, okay, so uh, for instance, uh, or, uh, you can um, compute, for example, uh, the spectrum of uh, of the AB singularities in this case. So, uh, uh, so if you take, uh, let's say, some uh, finite subgroup of SL two uh, C, then uh, these uh, groups are uh, are. Uh, classified and uh, these uh, groups were, were classified by Klein in the uh, 19th century, and this uh, uh, fits into this uh, ABA, uh, ABE pattern in this case. So we uh, we um, so whenever you take some finite group of SL2C, then this uh, must be some uh, this must be one of these groups. It, it could be some uh, cyclic groups, some binary like Euler group, or the binary uh, groups of uh, platonic solids in this case. So, but the point is that in these cases, you can produce uh, the corresponding portion stack or the corresponding portion variety uh, by taking the, the action of uh, G on the complex plane. And uh, well, uh, what Klein proved, uh, Klein, uh, proved uh, was that uh, uh, these uh, portion singularities are in fact given as hypersurface singularities. Uh, with these uh, specific equations for each one of these uh, uh, climbing groups. So, uh, well, you can use uh, or you can compute the string spectrum of the corresponding orbital A2 <coughs> divided by G, and you can also compute the classical steam spectrum of the corresponding uh, of the corresponding hypersurface singularity in this case. And well, it turns out just uh, by Almost my definition and by the change of variable formula and the integration that these two numbers must uh, agree. And in fact, well, in this case, uh, the spectrum of each one of these groups are given for exactly by the, the very same numbers of the steam spectrum of the corresponding uh, singularities. Okay, so <laughs> the point that I uh, want to stress here is that, well, uh, in the case of uh, of Kleinian uh, groups, or uh, well, more generally, uh, uh, Martino proof that uh, whenever you have some uh, finite subgroup of GL3 of C, then the corresponding equal invariant is trivial in this case. So, in particular, the uh, the Kleinian uh, all the Kleinian subgroups has uh, trivial equal invariant in, in that cases, uh, but uh, nevertheless, its the spectrum is. Uh, Far from being trivial in that case. So, uh, well, let me just uh, finish by stating some uh, conjectural 
uh, or some uh, questions that uh, you can ask for this or uh, of uh, for the relation uh, that uh, could exist uh, between the, the spectrum of, uh, of a finite group and the equivalence invariance. So uh, that there must be a relation uh, between these two things are uh, uh, it's uh, not. Uh, um, uh, but there must be some relation between these two numbers because of uh, the very definition of, of these two uh, of these two invariants. So in, on, on the one hand, we have the Ekedal's invariant, which is given by some expression, which is uh, uh, which is similar to the to the uh, to the motivic volume of uh, in, in motivic integration like this. So this expression is is almost uh, it's. Uh, it's some kind of motivic volume in, 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 the, in the classical setting of varieties. And on the other hand, the spectrum uh, is defined in terms of the motivic volume of the corresponding orbifold. So there must be some relation between these two, uh, these two things. Uh, but, well, we can ask some very uh, general questions about what uh, the relation would be. So, well, we can uh, ask first if, uh, if there is some purely algebraic description for the spectrum uh, uh, for, for a finite group G. So just as, it, as the Bogomolov uh, multiplier can be defined uh, in purely algebraic uh, terms using the short multiplier of, of the group and the restriction uh, to each uh, abelian subgroup, then uh, you can also ask if, uh, so, so for instance, this, uh, this spectrum, uh, this spectra are calculated using uh, using uh, the spectrum of the corresponding hypers of singularity. Are uh, these are not uh, uh, given in purely algebraic terms? So you can try to find some description for the spectrum which uh, just depend on algebra. Uh, and uh, well, we can also ask if there is. So if you take a look at this table here. Then uh, you can note that uh, the element, the number of elements in the spectrum are exactly given by the uh, the elements, uh, then the number of conjugacy classes of the of the corresponding <coughs> groups. So this is this is a, this must be truly in general that uh, the number of uh, of a spectral numbers coincides with the with the number of um, of conjugacy classes, which in this case is. Um, more or less evident uh, if you use some kind of some version of the Mackay correspondence in this case, uh, but there should be some general result which uh, says that uh, the spectral numbers for any finite group G, even if that group cannot be described using some kind of uh, hypersurface singularity, must uh, coincide with the corresponding uh, the number of spectral numbers must coincide with the number of conjugacy classes. Uh, uh, which uh, should be related with the fact that the string, uh, the string spectrum is defined using the chern brand homology in that cases. Uh, okay, so uh, also we can ask if, uh, if, well, if there is some kind of connection between the number of uh, spectral numbers and the number of uh, uh, conjugacy classes, then uh, then there must be some kind of uh, representation theoretic description or a, a representation to the meaning for the uh, for the spectral numbers in that case is some well uh, more a more ambitious uh, question should be if there is indeed some uh, kind of relation between the spectral numbers and the equal invariants in the sense that uh, well the equal invariant of all of these uh, climbing groups are trivial but its expression, its uh, spectra are not trivial, but in any case, we can try to find some kind of numerical condition on the spectrum which guarantees that the equal numbers are uh, are zero. So, for example, in uh, in uh, singularity theory, when you have uh, you, you can take the, the negative part of the spectrum and the degree of the negative part uh, equals uh, the geometric gen uh, genus in that case. So. That kind of uh, relations uh, maybe will uh, produce some, uh, or you can try to uh, to find some kind of numerical conditions which which uh, imply some uh, uh, which implies a triviality for the uh, for the equivalent uh, invariance like in the 
in the case of uh, uh, singularity, uh, the spectrum of singularity and gate and the geometric genus. And well, uh, these are some open questions. Uh, there are some references here, and I will stop uh, here. Thank you. I did that actually uh, in this setting that I had the uh, book to consider the monocyte group defined by a conservation chamber. That's still correct, actually.